due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. And this is live on the power cam. Let's go, man. This guy is crazy. Get off the ground. 10-0, 10-0. From around the world and across the country. He's in the woods. From your own backyard. This is the reality of law enforcement today. Look at that. Come on. For the next 60 minutes, look out, look out. you'll be a witness. Shut your truck off. You'll see everything an officer sees. Man, man. The fastest pursuits. The scariest shootouts. The most extreme and unusual crimes. I need some help. Ever captured on video. Police and news gathering agencies around the world have sent us this footage. Because they want you to see for yourself the insanity of criminal behavior. Because only when you've seen how it happens and why it happens can you make sure it doesn't happen to you. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell, and I can tell you that a high-speed pursuit is not a game. And it's not easy. It's life or death. When officers send us their tapes, it's because they want the average citizen to see what they're up against. The toughest, fastest, and wildest criminals in the world. So strap yourself in. The chase is on, and you're riding shotgun. Phoenix, Arizona. A pair of armed robbers tries to flee through rush hour traffic after holding up a dry cleaners. He's uh, sort of stuck in traffic. Who knows where he's trying to go? The two are like panicking animals, running round and round, chasing their own tails. There may not be police cruisers behind them, but there is a news chopper overhead. Here he is, crossing over all lanes, endangering everyone's life. It's watching every reckless move. The van scrapes an SUV and barrels on. The suspect's driving is so bad, the passenger demands to trade places. The driver and the passenger switch seats. But it's not much of an improvement. You know what, he's gonna blow right through the stop sign. At least the new driver uses his turn signal. Police ground units hold back to avoid pushing these rampaging suspects even more. They're already dangerous enough. They don't want him going out of control at high speeds and hurting somebody. By now, the cops have completely lost sight of the van. The news chopper helps them find it. Are you uh, looking for this green van still? Yeah, that's firm. We'll stay with until you catch up. The suspect squeezed by oncoming traffic, narrowly avoiding a major collision. Tired of these suicidal traffic maneuvers, they pull into an apartment complex. One of them takes off on foot. Immediately, a motorcycle cop shepherds two pedestrians to safety. They want to protect the citizens first. But once they secure the area, the suspects are apprehended within minutes. After cleaning out a dry cleaners, these bad news bandits bumbled wildly across this obstacle course of rush hour roads and freeways. But the combined efforts of the news force Okay, we'll stay with until you catch up. and the police force Foiled their getaway, then put them away behind bars. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The customers in this convenience store have no idea that a madman waits just outside. He's a drug addict with a history of random violence. The clerk sells a 12-pack of beer to a customer, calmly going about his business. But when the store clears out, the druggie makes his move. Then the man does the unthinkable. The clerk got doused with gasoline, but managed to avoid the flames. 
he conceals himself inside the store, not knowing what awaits him out front. The layer of gasoline burns off, but the fire spreads to other materials on the counter. The whole shop threatens to go up in flames. Finally, other customers arrive. The fire! The fire! Fire! The clerk runs outside to safety as pedestrians raise the alarm. Several Samaritans try to help, but they only make the situation worse. One man tries to stomp out the flames. It isn't working. Then he gets a brainstorm. This is the guy who just purchased that 12-pack of beer. And he decides to fight the fire 12 cold ounces at a time. It seems like a ridiculous plan. But the strangest thing about it is, it's working. Beer after beer gets sacrificed for the good of the store. Finally, the frosty extinguishers finish the job. When firefighters arrive, they find a room choked with smoke, but minimal fire damage. The clerk tells the arson investigator about the video evidence. Nine days later, the suspect gets caught. He's now serving 15 years for arson and attempted murder. No one knows why this drugged out firebug made this attack. But thanks to one Suds loving Samaritan, the only person who got burned was the arsonist himself. This is where criminals belong. But if one ever manages to escape, you can bet officers won't rest until they're brought back, even if it takes the entire force. Peach County, Georgia. The two men in this SUV are about to make a huge mistake. It's not their first. The fleeing men have stolen their car but the suspects are not mere thieves. The men have a history of running and doing what's needed to get away. It's going to take everything these three officers have to shut the bad guys down. They act fast. When one of the deputies fights to box in the escapees, the escapees fight back. The situation becomes more dangerous as traffic on the interstate increases. The officers have to fall back. They try to follow the men down the off ramp, but the suspects attack again. The driver slams on his brakes, trying to force the officer into a rear-end collision. If that happens, the officer's airbag will deploy, blinding him and removing him from the chase. But the trick doesn't work. And as the outlaws cross into Bibb County, a new officer joins the chase. Up ahead, even more deputies wait in the wings. The reinforcements quickly move into place. They block off every possible escape route. The two counties now united form an unshakable team. The squadron of officers sticks to the SUV like a pack of hounds. Incredibly, even more cruisers join the pursuit, and just in time. The suspects are now threatening to roll back onto the interstate. But these officers are not about to let that happen. They make their move. The team of deputies instantly and completely surrounds the suspects. In a last-ditch desperation move, 
The men ram one of the cruisers. Bad idea. In the blink of an eye, the officers are all over them. When criminals break out of prison, word travels fast. Because of the grave threat to public safety, these officers mobilized quickly and massively to make sure these escapees went right back where they belong. Next, on World's Wildest Police Videos, criminals, they're all losing it. Teenagers lose their cool. Fugitives lose their balance. And a madman loses his grip. And the only thing these crooks will gain is a crash course in police procedure. You gonna get locked up? Peach County, Georgia. A man is pulled over for tailgating. Sir, the reason why I stopped you is following a little close on that white cab line. The sheriff's deputy doesn't want to ticket the driver. He's willing to let him off with a warning. Hey, it's not gonna count against you, nothing like that. But when he looks at the driver's paperwork, the officer notices the man has an out-of-state license. It catches his eye because this highway is a notorious drug trafficking route. You been on vacation? Whereabouts? The driver claims he's been visiting his girlfriend. Then the deputy notices a second red flag. Hey, she's the one that rented the vehicle? The car is a rental. Furthermore, the man's name is not on the agreement. You're not supposed to be driving it. Since drug traffickers often rent vehicles under assumed names, the deputy decides to investigate further. Where are you coming from now? At first, the man claimed he was on vacation. Now he says he lives nearby with his girlfriend. I thought you said you was going back to Florida. The officer finds another glaring inconsistency. If y'all live local, how come y'all rent a car? The man's story doesn't add up, so the deputy gets right to the point. Do you have anything illegal in this car? The driver says he's not carrying any contraband. Large quantity of money. Again, the man shakes his head no. The officer has just one more question. Uh, would you mind if I searched your car? The driver agrees to the search, then says he needs to get his keys out of the ignition. But before the deputies can stop him, he jumps behind the wheel. 1080, uh, ask for consent to search, you jump back the car. Driving like a maniac, the suspect zigzags across lanes, nearly sideswiping the semi. He then flies down an exit ramp and blows past a stop sign. The deputy believes the suspect is on his way to his girlfriend's house. She might be headed for Fort Valley. On an empty stretch of road, the rental car runaway floors the gas and burns up the pavement. Okay, we're at 110. The suspect gains a sizable lead. Just when it looks like he might get away, he's gonna pass on the curb. He finds a police roadblock. Instead of giving up, the suspect bails out on foot. But with the platoon of officers on his tail, he doesn't get far. The man said he didn't have much money, but police find a small fortune in his pocket. How much money is it? Oh, it's dollars As he's hauled to the slammer, this would-be fugitive tries to peddle another tall tale. Not in the run. This man claimed he had nothing to hide. Anything illegal in this car? But if he wasn't a crook when this traffic stop began... Uh, would you mind if I searched your car? By the time he eluded arrest... Jimmy. ...committed dozens of moving violations... ...and evaded police... You got him in custody. ...he certainly had a criminal record when it was over. Charlock, Missouri. A man enters a convenience store that he's very familiar with because he's ripped it off before. Returning to the scene of the crime, the crook grabs four 12-packs of beer. And as soon as the clerks turn their backs, he hustles out the door. When one cashier realizes what's happened, she goes after the man. But he's long gone. The other clerk calls the police. I just had a um, guy run off with a um, four 12-pack. 
The good news is witnesses have scribbled down his license plate number. But the bad news is the number turns out to be phony. Since police have no way to track him down, the suspect gets away, for now. Weeks later, the liquor thief comes back for another five-finger discount. However, the sharp-eyed clerk is on to him, and for good reason. After a previous theft, this cashier was suspended without pay for letting the crook get away. Now he waits until the suspect grabs another 12-pack, and just before the beer bandit makes his getaway, the clerk uses the remote control to lock the door. Then he seals the bulletproof counter window and enjoys some payback. Your ass today, buddy. Got your ass today. The petty thief's luck just gets worse. Not only is he trapped inside, a policeman happens to be fueling up outside. While the suspect slips into the restroom, the clerk summons the officer. Hey, can you come here for a second? Thank you. I got this man that's stealing this beer. When the policeman enters, the clerk points the way to the shoplifter. There he is in the bathroom. Same man that got me suspended. The suspect is searched, but denies any wrongdoing. This is not me, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, I... However, the busted booze hound isn't fooling anyone. What, what's gonna happen, huh? You're gonna get locked up. That's what's gonna happen. In his mad dash for malt liquor, this beer-swilling suspect did more than just steal a couple of cases. I just had a um, guy run off with um, four 12 pack. He proved you can steal from some of the people some of the time. What is you know? But you can't steal from this clerk twice. Oh, catch your ass today. Jail. No one wants to wind up here. But kids on a crime spree seldom realize that the price of one bad idea could lead to a lifetime behind bars. Norman, Oklahoma. A suspected truck thief treats the interstate like the last lap of the Indy 500. After slicing across traffic and cutting off a semi, the truck rockets off the freeway. Police notice the right tire is almost shredded. Just as the pickup hits an access road, the radial flies off the rim, followed by the hubcap. Losing a wheel would bring any sensible driver to a screeching halt. But this Shanghai Chevy just picks up speed and turns the road into a fireworks display. The driver arrogantly blows red lights. Snubs every stop sign. And thunders into a quiet neighborhood. The scorched rim is so hot that when the truck plows into a puddle of water, it sends up a blistering cloud of steam. As another hubcap goes sailing off, the abused vehicle lights up the night. With the hot-wired hard body about to disintegrate, the suspects dive into a motel parking lot. But police aren't about to let these reckless road hogs get away. Moments later, officers find their fugitives. These subjects in custody. Police are shocked to find out who these brazen bandits really are. They're just two teenage boys out for a joyride. Okay, spread them. These thieving teens thought the cops couldn't catch them. And the law couldn't punish them. But one day soon, this kind of bad behavior will get them more than a slap on the wrist. It'll get them a tiny cell for a big stretch of time. Coming up, on world's wildest police videos. What's wrong with you, man? Are you stupid? Dummies on parade. These men were chasing me. They're asleep at the wheel. They're talking trash. Don't tell me about my and they're falling hard. The only thing they're not doing Put your hands up. is using their heads. I 
getting in a whole bunch of trouble. They're not brain surgeons. They're not Rhodes Scholars. What's wrong with you, man? Are you stupid? They're just dim bulbs with not so bright ideas. St. Anne, Missouri, a police officer finds himself in the path of a high-speed chase. Only moments ago, the driver of this green sedan fled a traffic stop and ran right over stop sticks. As the unit swings around and joins the chase, police learn the car is stolen. The pursuit slaloms through traffic at white knuckle speeds. But what the police don't know is that the man's wife and kids are also in the vehicle. I copy the bill, you'll the driver. Up ahead, a cruiser gets in front of the stolen car. The suspect swerves. But with a spike flattened rear tire, he loses control. The driver rolls to a stop in opposing lanes of traffic. The man abandons his family. But if he thinks no one's coming after him, he's sorely mistaken. As the suspect jogs away, he seems almost casual. But there's nothing casual about the way Officer Joe Pizzo takes him down. The patrolman keeps bulldogging the suspect until backup arrives, and the man is taken away in cuffs. This felon with a family treated a stolen car like a toy and ran from the law like it was a game. But the St. Anne police refused to play any games. Instead, they played for keeps. A car thief in a parking lot can be like a kid in a candy store. But criminals beware, because you never know when the police will be watching. It usually occurs when you least expect it. You turn away for a second, and someone has broken into your car. Or worse. It happens quickly. It happens often. And it can happen anywhere. In Los Angeles, a string of recent break-ins prompts mall security police to stake out this parking lot. Before long, they spot a suspicious pair. While one thief keeps a lookout, his partner jimmies the lock on this vehicle. In the time it takes most people just to find their favorite FM station, this suspect has stolen the radio. Then the thief drops the stereo, so as not to be seen with the boosted goods. The lookout man distracts any possible spectators, while the break-in artist backs away from the scene. Now everything is set up for the payoff. Deciding no one is looking, the watchdog casually lifts the radio. The job is done. He gives his partner the okay, and now it's time to split. About 30 seconds was all that was needed for this well-executed heist to take place. If only they weren't being watched. Police catch the hoodlums moments after leaving the lot. The video of their crime provides the undeniable proof needed for a conviction. Across the country in Naples, Florida, another sting is underway. At first glance, these guys appear to be average citizens, and that's exactly what they want you to believe. In reality, the men are professional thieves. They casually saunter off so as not to draw too much immediate attention. They've done this before. Then finding the desired mark, one of the men returns to the scene. He heads directly for the pre-scouted target. While pretending he owns the vehicle, the suspect breaks the lock and opens the door. Once inside, he goes straight for the trunk release. He knows this is where most people keep their valuables. Jackpot. His instincts are right. He discovers a small brown and white leather handbag. A good score for such little work. The man thinks he's home free. He thinks wrong. In a moment, his partner joins him at the getaway car. Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Do not move! Do not move! They never see police rush in. Do not move! As fast as they were at committing their crime, Put your hands up! 
police are twice as fast at taking them down. Automotive burglaries only take a few seconds. But if you've ever been the victim of a break-in, you know the effects can be long-lasting. Because you can't watch your car 24 hours a day, it's good to know there's someone out there <laughs> looking out for all of us. Hands up, now! Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos, what lawbreakers won't do. Riders won't calm down. Drivers won't sign tickets. I don't agree with this. And speed demons won't pull over. We got spark flying, spark flying. You won't want to miss it. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Criminal mischief. Dirty moves. Dirty mouths. Dirty fights. And sometimes... That looks like a camera. Dirty tricks. Bellefontaine Neighbors, Missouri. An officer knows it's going to be a tough traffic stop when the driver ignores him and pulls into a drive through window. Pull it out of the driveway. The only violation so far is improper lane usage. But that's about to change. Six, David, 13 traffic. First of all, the woman can't find her driver's license or proof of insurance. Then she decides that she doesn't have to cooperate at all. If you're not going to sign your summons, I can lock you up. What, because I don't want to sign? I don't agree with this. Instead of just signing the ticket, the woman gets belligerent. Although this woman has a hair-trigger gutter mouth... Okay, well, I... The officer refuses to be baited into a verbal scuffle. Mercifully, Another unit arrives. A second officer tries his luck. It's not saying I'm guilty. Thanks, David, it's not saying I agree. It's not saying anything other than you promised to appear and take care of the ticket. Somehow the officer's words sink in. The driver signs the ticket, but her winning personality still cuts through. Every last one of them on the Throughout the tirade, the officers maintain their composure, but the driver won't follow their example. Don't tell me about my mouth. It's my mouth. It's my mouth. Can't fix that, can we? you damn right. The officers give her a chance to redeem herself. You realize all this is being tape recorded? I don't give a damn. Good. Good. As far as the officers are concerned, it's mission accomplished. But a traffic stop like this is just another reminder that being a police officer can be exhausting work. Perth, Australia. The night begins with good intentions. An 18th birthday party for two local twin girls. But when 250 gate crashers show up, things get way out of control. A handful of troublemakers starts to destroy street signs. We were terrified, so just when the noise started, we took our gear, our animals, to sleep elsewhere. By the time police arrive, the instigators have whipped other teens into a frenzy. Fueled by liquor and raging hormones, these kids think they're fighting for their right to party. But all they've done is turn a good time into a nasty riot. One group of hooligans pelt officers with rocks and beer bottles. No, one of the officers was struck on the head on his helmet, and I would su suggest that had he not been wearing the helmet, he may not have been here today. To bring things under control, police are forced to bring in canine units, helicopters, and officers in full riot gear. The once quiet suburb is erupted into a war zone. When the dust finally settles, the neighborhood is littered with debris. Residents are angry. I was standing outside the whole darn time to have put on this morning with a baseball bat. Not all of the teens wanted a riot. The birthday girls themselves are thankful that the police showed up. Yeah, we'd probably better say thank you to the cops because they were so cool about it. it. Might have ended up worse. I suppose the message is if you're going to have these sorts of parties, make sure they're proper, otherwise you come to our party. When this birthday celebration 
became a birthday bash. Police had no choice but to crash the party. When pursuing a drunk driver, the police have some hard decisions to make so they don't create even more dangerous situations on the road. Florence, South Carolina. Trouble starts when police try to pull over a reckless driver. The rickety jalopy is ill-suited for a chase, but the suspect doesn't seem to notice. We got sparks flying, sparks flying. Luckily, the roads are deserted, so officers play it safe. I'm staying back for a way on this. But the driver doesn't care about safety. He whips a wild U-turn and puts the pedal to the metal. The driver pushes his car for more speed, more power. But keeping the car on the road is a losing battle. When the driver nearly wipes out, his survival instinct finally kicks in. Pull over. He pulls the car over. It's the smartest thing he's done all night. Put your hands up! Officers move in to arrest the man. But there's one more step before they go downtown. How much have you been drinking tonight, by the way? A sobriety test. The driver fails miserably. This guy's gas guzzler tore up the road and lit up the night. But when police learned that his car wasn't the only thing guzzling, the suspect got to add driving under the influence to his long list of violations. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. From tragedy to comedy. Is that a bad one? Combustible cars and startling confessions. I have their drugs. From far out tales. These men were chasing me. To hell on earth. It's coming your way. On the streets, police officers run into the same people over and over again. This can be an advantage, or it can leave you wide open to disaster. Butte, Montana, five days before Christmas. Holiday shoppers are suddenly witness to a horrifying spectacle. A suicidal man has parked his car in the middle of an intersection, shutting down traffic. In the vehicle is an assortment of deadly explosives. One of the first officers on the scene is Sheriff Bob Butorovich. When I approached the car, what I saw was some black gunpowder and uh, gasoline uh, tied together with, uh, with uh, duct tape. Then Butorovich sees something that catches him completely off guard. The suspect is Terry Roslin, an old acquaintance. I was a counselor and uh, watched him grow up through the years. Another officer, Bob Lee, has a similar history with Rosalind. I'd known Terry for probably eight or nine years. Off duty at the time, Lee learned of the situation when Rosalind robbed a pharmacy for Valium and codeine. I was shopping with my wife, and uh, we noticed that several police units were in pursuit of a vehicle that was driving very slow. I recognized the driver of that vehicle as being Terry Rosalind. We actually stopped him with my personal vehicle. With the suspect boxed in but heavily drugged, officers work fast to secure the intersection. An unmarked police car pulls up, shielding local businesses from the potential blast. While Butorovich distracts Roslin, Lieutenant Lee deflates a tire. I felt very uneasy. I thought that if he looks through that passenger side mirror and sees me, it could be over. The officers try to get to the core of the man's problem they find Roslyn extremely despondent over a pending divorce. He also recently lost his job. To make matters worse, the painkillers have left him very unstable. Still, officers are confident their history with Roslyn will lead to a peaceful conclusion. But as we talked to him, I thought that we were gonna resolve the problem. I really did, I, I thought, oh, this, we can get through this. But as time went on, and I don't know if it was because of the, uh, the drugs he was taking, but he got less coherent. 
He wasn't listening to what we were trying to explain to him. Inside the car, Roslyn's hand shakes perilously close to the bomb's toggle switch. He only had the window down about two inches. And he's saying something, but we couldn't understand what he was saying, so we had to bend down to listen. Only a miracle saves him from what happens next. I walked back to the car, uh, put my face down, and uh, he detonated. A concussion rips through the town as the car explodes into flames. The sheriff, alive but in severe shock, tries to regain his bearings. An officer cradles the injured Lieutenant Lee while police run to help other victims. Miraculously, Roslyn survives the blast and is able to escape his burning car. The flames grow more intense as each second ticks by. Before firefighters can put out the blaze, a second explosion, more powerful than the first, rocks the area. It's caused by five pipe bombs underneath the driver's seat. Later, ATF agents tell the officers what would have happened if both explosions had gone off at once. Did anybody in a 30-foot radius probably would have been killed. Remarkably, not one life is lost in the day's events. With major wounds over 70% of his body, the suspect is flown to a special burn unit several states away. After months of intensive care, he's extradited back to Butte to stand trial. While being escorted through the airport by Butorovich, Roslin finally speaks of his situation. I'm in a whole bunch of trouble. I had no intentions of causing anybody else any harm. Today, the officers involved reflect on the situation with mixed emotions. He was a sick person. We're there to help people during a time of crisis, and that's what we do. That's what police officers do. I have no ill feelings whatsoever against Terry. When these officers saw a person in need, they did everything they could to save his life, even at the risk of losing theirs. On world's wildest police videos. Hi. Money. That's why they were chasing me. Drugs. Is that a lot? Guns. There was a gun. And one hellacious police prank. And the rehab was really working? Next. The first thing a young officer learns is to trust his partners with his life. The second thing he learns is that when it comes to practical jokes, he can't trust anyone. That's why we sent our cameras out into the field to record one young rookie getting initiated into the world of police pranks. Lowndes County, Georgia, at the end of a shift, a sergeant informs another unit that their replacements are now on duty. Whoa, what's going on, man? But he's really there to give the young deputy and the other cruiser a lesson in police pranks. Y'all let your man ride with us a little bit, get some experience. Right on cue, a white jeep comes down the road. Look like you're cooking. The senior officers act surprised. Woo! But they know the driver is part of the prank, and things are right on schedule. Moments later, the jeep heads into a parking lot where hidden cameras are waiting. Once they pull the suspect over, the sergeant has the rookie act as his backup. Come around the passenger side and meet me up front. However, the upbeat woman who gets out of the vehicle doesn't seem like a threat. Hi. How you doing? OK. Showing the young recruit how to handle the situation, the sergeant demands to know why she was speeding. I've heard all the excuses, OK? Uh-huh. Tell me the reason why. I'm sorry. I know I was driving really fast, but I had slowed down. I was driving faster before. Is this a The rookie may be new to the job, but he's never heard of this. I had been doing like 100, and I, I got down to like 80. Well, why, why are you going so fast? Well, I had to because I was trying to get away from the men in the car. The men? The black car. These men were chasing me. For what? Um, because I have their, um, uh, money. OK. Uh, where is that money at? It's in the car. The sergeant leaves the baffled deputy to babysit the suspect. And inside the Jeep, he finds some serious cash. Jeez. Yeah, I'd say that's a lot of money. All right, hold on to this one. 
Tell me about this money. What What's the story with that? They're mad. That's why they were chasing me, because of the drugs. The drugs? Well, what about the drugs? I have their drugs. There's drugs in this car. There's some. I don't know if all of them are there, but I, I, I picked up what I could and put it there, and then I drove off. You just stay right there and don't move, okay? While he searches the Jeep, the woman pleads her case to the rookie. My boyfriend is in rehab, and I was supposed to just get rid of it. I was supposed to get rid of it. I mean, he, we are starting a new life, and the rehab was really working, and he's so much better now. Everything's better. Unfortunately for her, this heartwarming story produces a heart-stopping amount of drugs. Is that a lot? Uh, you think that's a lot? So I was supposed to drive to the Days Inn in Cordill okay. and meet the guys. As the deputy listens, he's thinking one thing. This sergeant must be the best roadside interrogator in the history of law enforcement. So he was shouting back, and then the next thing I know, the gun went off, and oh, the guy fell down. The gun? There was a gun. Well, there may have had more than one, but there was the one that I saw and picked it up. Where is that gun now? It's in the back of the Jeep. Once again, the woman has told the truth. There is definitely a gun in the back of the Jeep. Jeez. Is that a bad one? I should say so. What is it bad? Yeah, that's bad. I am Hold on. The rookie tries to concentrate. He's mentally recording every detail in preparation for the eventual trial. Else? Uh, no, I don't think so. As far as the young deputy is concerned, this woman is on her way to jail. Well, look, I've got to take this stuff into evidence, obviously. Okay. Because it's illegal. I know it's bad. Yeah, it's I real bad. That's cocaine. It's real bad. But I think that you've been honest with me. Oh, I have. And I, I appreciate have. I that. I have. I swear. What I'm going to do is cut you a break and give you a warning, okay? Oh, y'all are so sweet, really? Okay. The rookie cannot believe what he's just heard. But you have got to slow down. Slow down? What about the money? What about the gun and the drugs? The rookie's mind is racing at a mile a minute, but he says nothing. But before she goes, the woman has one more confession. Don't leave these cameras. The rookie is more confused than ever, but things are about to get very clear. That looks like a camera. That looks like a camera. That looks like a camera over there in that van. And here's one right here. And there's one right there. And there's one right here. Son, you've been pranked. <laughs> Luckily, the young deputy is a good sport. He even gets a hug from the Southern Belle with a lot to tell. But most importantly, he learns that when a confession looks too good to be true... Where is that going now? It's in the back of the Jeep. It just might be a prank. But he had this dumbass grin on his face, like, <laughs> like, I'm not believing this is happening. Crime runs the gamut. From minor theft to major catastrophe. From shoplifting booze to lighting the fuse. From riots down under to bombs in Butte. Law breaking cuts across all lines. Two white males never stops. 